Sound good. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. We are continuing in our theme that we've been talking about, the five-fold ministry uh, basic training, and this is our part two. So we've gone over the apostle, the prophet, um, the evangelist, and now we're going to be talking about the role of the pastor. Um, and so today, Pastor Darla will be bringing that lesson to us. We have two more that we're going to do, the, the role of the teacher, and then uh, we're going to um, kind of sum it all up with leaders working together. And so I'm going to have a word of prayer, and then I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Darla to um, take us away. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come together as you continue to teach us who we are and our roles in the kingdom and the building of the kingdom. Uh, so God, we just thank you for equipping us and teaching us so that we can be who you call for us to be. Now have your way, help us to, to glean the information, to see ourselves and to be able to move accordingly. In Jesus name, amen. All right, Miss Darla. I'm going to All pick right. Good evening, everybody. It's so glad to have you guys in the house. And um, for those who are going to watch the replay, I hope you guys um will be blessed by this um teaching on tonight. All right. So as you heard that we have been talking about the five-fold ministry uh, over the last couple of weeks. And tonight I have been assigned to do um the role of the, the role of a pastor. And I'm going to read you um the scripture in regard to the different um within the fivefold of, of the different gifts that I get that I've given. So I'm coming to you from Ephesians mm -hmm. chapter four, verses eleven through uh sixteen. And I'm I don't I forget what version I'll be reading, but I'm just gonna go ahead and read it. It says, So now these are the gifts of Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and the teachers. Their responsibility is to equip to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we come to such um, unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son, that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching, we will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever that sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly as each part. Sorry about that. Um more like Christ, who uh, who's the head of the body of the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly as each part down to its own special work. It helps the other part grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing full of love. Give me one moment. Let me put my phone on. Do not disturb because people like to call me at different moments where they don't need to be calling me. One second, people. Okay. Sorry about that. All right. So, as I finished reading that scripture, it said, pastors, pastors are represented on the hand by the ring finger, which speaks of covenant relationship. As shepherd of the Lord, flock, pastors have a covenant relationship and an obligation to the flock. They are overseers of a local assembly working to guard the flock through exhortation, prayer, and counsel, and by overseeing the spiritual life of the church as a whole. And those are not my words. I got that from the book that we were um, studying out of, just to clarify. And as it continues, does the Apostle Paul share why he gave the church this gift in reference to pastors to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for the building of the body of Christ, as it says, according to verse 12, According to an article that I found um, that was telling me by Anthony Hitler, he stated that pastor plays a significant role in leading and guiding the church community. They are responsible for shepherding the flock, teaching and preaching the word of God, providing spiritual guidance and caring for the needs of the congregation. 
And I am going to do the word association that was listed in the book that we studied, which I thought which was kind of cool, which has like three components of the role of the pastor and what they tend to do. So the first word, we're going to talk about feed. The second word, we're going to talk about nurture. The third word, we're going to talk about is protect. And then after that, I will be talking about like the qualification of the pastor. And then that should be about the conclusion. All right. So basically what I got about it said the road the, the word association so feed. So as I begin to really read that particular portion and really make it into my own words, it was pretty cool that to and just to see it out loud what that looks like. So it said the word feed, the pastor is responsible, is responsible for feeding the congregation, meaning giving them the unadulterated word of God, which means giving them the spiritual food for their soul in the local body. The pastor is the primary preacher slash teacher, but this outfit is what? It can have a dual role within the fivefold. For example, meaning like if if somebody's evangelist, they can be a pastor. If somebody is in the office of, of a prophet, they can be a pastor and so forth, if you get what I mean. So, so there are different roles. You can, you can have dual roles. Even if you're a pastor, you can be a the senior pastor of a church. <clears throat> okay? And can serve as the senior pastor, what I just said, of a local church. Part of the pastoral role of feeding the congregation, um, a pastor, pastors are not going to always bring the feel-good messages, okay? Or to try to appease individuals. However, it is the pastor's role to guard, to watch, and uh, to watch over the safekeeping of the souls. This process will this process would involve weaning. That's not how you have a baby and you start them off with formula, and then when they get a little older, you give them uh like baby food. Then after that, they start to know what what solid food is like. That's the same as that um weaning. So it's the changing of, of the appetite from milk to solid to food, which may be challenging, because sometimes you have some folks that can be a little hot-headed. You're like, look, I'm trying to help you, help you get your life together. Pastor but Darla, Pastor Darla, can you come on camera? You can see me? No. Oh, my bad. Yeah, I wasn't come sending on, you the text, second. but I said, I don't know if she just not getting it yet. We don't see you. No, uh-uh. Hold on one second. <laughs> I didn't realize that wasn't on camera. I'm so sorry. No problem. Okay, can you see me now? Yeah, there we go. Okay, I am so sorry. I did not realize that was Look, you him. and I'm you just, was going. Just, I was sending messages. I said, okay, she ain't. You know what? Me. I didn't even, you know what? They're not popping up because I'm so, uh, I'm looking at my other screen. Gotcha. So I'm, I'm trying to, like, you know, be consistent. So I, I apologize no for that, guy. Oh, that's okay. Okay. All right. So, uh, but thank you so much for uh, making that clarification. I apologize. Um. So, as I was saying, so you, it, it helps change the appetite. You know, from uh, from milk to solid filled to food. Sometimes it can be challenging. You know, right? Sometimes you have them people. Oh, you can't tell me this. I've been this way, and you know, uh, you know, ain't nothing wrong with me. I might have a little bit of problem. No, sister girl, you got some problem, problem. But, but at the past, we have to understand there's only so much we can do to help the individual. <clears throat> and if if if, if, the, if the if the individual don't want to do the work. Uh, we continue to, to, to encourage them, pray for them, but it has to be both ways. You know what I mean? So at the same time, you might have some easy ones, and sometimes you might have some challenging ones. But that's the grace that God has given us. He's given us strategies to how to deal with that type of thing, all right? But when we deal with the challenge, and guess what? It brings, it will bring great, it, it will bring about greater spiritual growth and such reward it's so cool when you see when, when you are walking along somebody and you're helping them you're helping them through their walk and their journey and you see the transformation that takes place it is such a blessing to see that because you know god helps you give you strategy of how to help that person get to where they are at and continue to grow so as it says in hebrews chapter 5 verses 13 to 14 in the ESV version, it said, For everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, since he is a child. But 
salad food like the steak potatoes is for the mature, for those who have powers of discernment trained by the content factor to distinguish good from evil. So we can never say once we get in these roles or whatever, oh, guess what? I got my, I got a title now. I'm all that in a bag of chips. No, you're not. You're going to continue to grow. You still have to, you still have to have training. You still have to do whatever, how to even walk even more effectively in that column. Because each time your elevation go higher and higher and you got to figure out how to, uh, how to contain it and how to use it for the glory of God and not get dig-headed. Because some people get that and be like, hold up, did you not forget? So then that's what the feed means. So the next part is the word nurture. So pastors are called to nurture the individual. They oversee by having one-on-one -on -one conversation to care for one's needs, their concerns, or just to do like, Routine routine check in to see how a person is doing, which is uh, which is the pastor is able to minister to specific needs. So you can't expect a pastor to have um uh can be mind readers. You know what I mean? And sometimes the Lord will use you like, okay, I see what's wrong with that individual. You know, He'll give you insight, but not all the time. He might not give it to you. So sometimes it's good to sit down, have that one on one conversation with a person. Really hear them out, not listen at them, but really listen to them word for word and say, oh, okay, I see. And then you'll be able to really help that person in that particular area that they may, that, that they may need help in or prayer in, whatever that may look, look like. So nurturing can also include visiting, visiting the sick, going to nursing home. Um, going to people's home, however it see fit in that particular thing, and so forth. So we, I, so pastors are very nurturing as well. So we're called to nurture, um, the body of Christ that we are to oversee, that we are to walk along, walk alongside with, that we are supposed to up, supposed to help and uh, upbring and train, so they be able to do the great work of the Lord and know what their call is on their life. Amen. So the third portion is um, protect. So the pastor role is to protect the sheep from wool. Okay. And or those that may pry to draw individuals away from God. Um, there are sometimes, or the majority of the time, sometimes you don't realize it, if, if you don't have your, if you don't have your, um, your your goggles or your vision X-ray on or your discernment heightened, um, wolves are lurking in the congregation. They may look like they got it all together. They would say the right words and look and look good. In the context that there are um what did they say? Hold on one second. Wolves are within the congregation. So there are um where the gift have to come in alignment. So it can be recognized. So the gifts have to be so you be able to see like, uh, okay, oh, uh, I I see you over there. So you, <laughs> I spot you. They try to act like they ain't gonna be spotted, but come on, they said no, you can't fool God like that. Come on, God, <laughs> that is laughable. So these are individuals that attack or try to twist things around with certain people that are not may not be well stable in the word or are vulnerable in a vulnerable state who can who can bring confusion. So that's why we as pastors have to be alert, aware to protect to protect their congregation from sheep from sheep and wolves clothing with addressing the issue as it deems fit. So it comes from, like as it says in uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 15, it said, Be aware of the false prophets, teachers, who come to you dressed as sheep, appearing gentle and innocent, but inwardly, inwardly are ravages wolves. And the Lord will reveal, will reveal them to you. you gotta, that's why we got to say, pray up and watch. All right? So those are the three components that I found out um, the role of the pastor I supposed to have, like how to feed, nurture, and protect. So now I'm going to talk about the calling and the qualification of pastors. 
According to the scripture, pastors are called by God to serve and lead his people. We're not like these Facebook people talking about, oh, one day I'm a pastor now. You know, I prophesy. I see all this time. And they, and they give them own self to take it. Oh, yeah, I took these courses online. They, they, didn't, they have no covering. They just cover themselves, basically. We're not talking about them. We're talking about the real people that I really call by God to serve and lead his people. They are chosen and appointed to shepherd the flock, providing spiritual guidance and nurturing the faith of believers. The qualification for pastors are outlined in the Bible, emphasizing the importance of character, integrity, and a deep understanding of God's word. Which means pastors have to be studied. They have to have their accordion, a strong, a Study Bible, a notebook, journal, uh, not the internet. I mean, you got a whole full of resources and probably a whole bookcase of whole bunch of books like on deliverance, uh, casting out demons, miracles, all of that. <laughs> so a pastor comes with a lot of uh, a lot of work, a lot of work. So don't tell, no, don't let nobody. Fool you or, or tell your fear like, oh, pastor is just, it's so loving. It's such an easy job. You know, it's almost like holding and petting a puppy. Don't believe that. Don't believe that. You better run if they tell you that. If they tell you that, no. Pastor is hard work. It's hard work, but it's a rewarding work when you, when you know you're chosen to do it. You're called to do it. So the 10 Quality every pastor should project, and I got this off a um a website. I forgot to put it in. I have to go back to my um stuff that I've saved. So here are some of the ten qualifications quality um that someone said they look for uh that are not really like necessarily like deal breakers, but nonetheless are very important for pastoral ministry to fall within the frame work of the fruit of the spirit in a Christian life. So there you got 10 of them. One, you got to have a deep love and burden for people and soul. Two, a clear personal love for Jesus. Three, a warmth and personality that people respond well. Four, a unique ability to understand and explain God's word, which means you should not be a carbon copy of somebody. It's okay. Just be you. Just be unique how God has given it to you. You share how he's given it to you. And a five, an ability to emotionally engage with people, both public and private. So if you don't like people, if you don't like being around people, then I would say this not, not this might not be the best feel. So I would ask you to go back to the Lord. Did he really tell you call your fast you know, if, if you don't like people. You gotta have a love and a heart for people. Even though I know sometimes that people can be hard, touch and believe. Six, a clear communicator. You gotta be able to be a communicator. Seven, a authentic, honest. Awareness of God's heart and recognize personal brokenness. Eight, a humble, teachable spirit. Nine, a clear possession of wisdom and discernment into life and struggle. And the final piece is. A strong ability to emphasize to a holy person. And um, so they said at the bottom, it said pastors look, pastors look for these in future pastors, like within the local body or within a within a local church or wherever they may be, uh, to consider uh within a person's own character in the light of equality. So these are some of the qualities that um, pastors should possess. 
when uh, we are when we are called into that office or into that role of being loving to people, being kind, being Christ like, you know, showing um, how, how we walk it, how we live it, and uh, things like that, and not be fake. Like let it let it be let it be for real for real. Amen. So that's pretty much all I really had or all I really found about the role of the pastor. Amen. Amen. That's all right. Uh, Amen. You know, you, you was quick and to the point. You got us there. A um, couple of quick. Uh, well, if anybody have any comments or questions, you can come off and ask those. Um, in the meantime, asking for prayer. Um, um, prayer for our um, sister Brenda and, and yeah, her family okay. and the loss of her brother. Um, also, just keep um, Pastor Orr in prayer. She just was, you know, wasn't feeling, um, she said she was feeling a little under the weather. So we just pray okay. for her. You know, this weather has been doing its own thing and we was just kind of traveling. So sometimes just your body readjusting. Oh, um, so yeah, it could be that. that. So just, mm -hmm. you know, praying for that. Um, uh, just also for a um, couple of other um, concerns. I know I've got some things, you know, need the Lord to help me with. Um, so just asking for prayer uh, about that. So, um, okay, yeah. If anybody else have any prayer requests, you can um, let it be known. And Pastor Darling, you can go ahead and make pray, pray those um, concerns. Okay. Uh, all right. Amen. Okay, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, we just want to say thank you for allowing us to come to this gathering on tonight, Father God, just to get a better understanding and revelation about what it means to be in the office and the role of a pastor and what that looks like and the quality that we have to uh, model and be. And also, I pray right now for every um, pastor that's on this call and, every, and everyone that uh, go to, that's going to watch the replay, oh God, that they take this role seriously, Lord God, that they continue to walk in, in a Christ-like manner, and also with all the quality that was listed, Father God, just to have a heart for your people, oh God, but most important that we sit ourselves down, and you'll be the head of um, how you want us to serve your people in this day, in this time, and in this season, Father God, so I thank you right now for the role in the office of the pastor, which you have, uh, which you have um, personally appointed and chosen, Father God. So continue to uh, continue to show us, continue to teach us as we continue to grow within this role, Father God, and um, so we can continue to look more and more and more like you each and every day, Father. So, Father God, I come to you. Um, with the prayer request that um, that that has been lifted, Father. Father, right now I lift up for uh for our precious sister Brenda right now, Father God, who just lost who just who just lost her beloved brother, Father. I'm asking you right now, oh God, that you begin to comfort her, not just comfort her, but comfort every member of her family, oh God, every family, every friend, everybody that had encountered her brother, Father God. I pray right now that they know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy will definitely come again in the morning, Father God. I'm asking you right now that you will wrap your arms tightly around them like never before, Father. I ask you right now that you will send comfort like no other, Father. I'm asking you right now that you will send strength right now in the name of Jesus, oh God, for days to come and months to come and years to come right now in the name of Jesus. Allow them to have precious memories of their beloved of their beloved one that have gone on to glory, Father. I'm asking right now, God, that you will touch their heart and let them know that all will be well, Father, and that they will make it through this season, Father God, as long as they continue to lean on one another and especially lean on you when days seem when days seem long, when days seem dark, Father. But you are the light in the morning. You are the morning, you are the light, the radiant light that brings sunshine, that brings joy, that brings happiness, that brings the peace that the passion all. Oh, on the
understanding, Father God. So be with Sister Brenda and be with her loved ones as they prepare to lay their loved ones to rest, Father. And I come against any um any confusion, any discord, any of that that tries to creep in and wreck havoc or tries to split. Whatever they may look like, uh-uh, we ask you right now, enemy, that you go back to where you came from because you will not come in and try to destroy anything. Unity will be for this family right now in the name of Jesus. And if they have been any father now, Father, I speak right now for reconciliation to be in the family right now in the name of Jesus. If there's any financial role that are happening, Father, I ask you right now that you would send resources and that you would send um, individuals that would just bless and bless and bless to help with any financial burden that may be uh, within this family or they give aid to lay this family to rest, Father. But, Father, I even pray right now for um, Apostle Orr right now, Father God, uh, wherever she may be, Father. I'm asking you right now, God, that you would touch her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet, Father God. I pray right now, allow rest to be her portion, Father God. But not just rest, Father God, I'm asking you right now that you will um, heal every um, muscle in her body, Father God, every cell in her body, anything that's trying to creep up and not and and make her feel um and make her feel not make her not feel well, Father God. I'm asking you right now, God. I speak I speak right now, healing quickly, healing quickly, healing quickly in her body, Father God. The most important is just allow her to rest so that her body can heal properly, Father God, that I pray right now that as, even when she wakes up when she wakes up tomorrow morning, that whatever ailment that she has in her body, Father, that it will be gone and she will be back to feeling um like like herself, without any pain, without any um sickness, whatever that's going on that has tried to creep up in her body, Father. So I thank you right now for a quick miracle that you are doing in Apostles Or's life right now in the name of Jesus and for her body, Father. So we thank you right now for um healing right now in the name of Jesus. So, Father God, I come to you right now for Apostle Jewel, Father God, of the thing that of the concerns that on her heart, of the things that um that she might need answer for, Father God, or how to deal with certain things that may have that may have arose, Father. But I'm asking you right now that you give her peace, that the passion our understanding will come in you come even against the spirit of worry that may have tried to come prep up, any doubt, or whatever it may be, Father God, I'm asking you right now that whatever she is in need, you have already gone forth on her behalf and opening the, and opening those doors that man is trying to shut, whatever it is right now, Father God. But I know that right now that you are going to give her those answers quickly, quickly and swiftly, Father. I pray right now for new open doors, oh God. I even thank you right now for the door that you have already opened and for the door that you are getting ready to open, oh God, concerning everything about her. I even thank you right now for the books that um that that she has written and even for the new one that she's gonna even get ready to even write. But really for really for the reaches one, Father God, I even thank you right now that where where are where those are getting ready to go more exceedingly and abundantly, Father God. I thank you right now and I I, de I decree and speak right now and declare that these books would that these books will be number one in the name of Jesus. That anybody that gets a hold of this book, that they feel the anointing and that something will be broken off off of them as they read these books, Father God, as He had poured her heart into them and the heart because He feels your heart. So we thank you right now that you are her penmanship in these books, Father God. But I thank you right now what you are doing in her life, in her in her daughter's life, in her husband's life, in her household, Father. I even thank you right now for peace in her household, Father. I even thank you right now for the more. I even thank you right now for the blessing that you are getting ready to pour into this family like never before. I even thank you right now for the mind blowing that you're getting ready to do. <laughs> that you thought couldn't be done, but you're gonna change it. You're gonna change it. You're gonna change it around, Father God. But I thank you right now 
what you are getting ready to do. So I pray right now for everybody that's on this call, Father. I pray right now that even though we are in the middle of the week, and we're almost making it to the weekend, God, but I'm asking right now that you would give everybody peace um, to make it throughout the week, Father God. We come against any any um, hindrance that try to get us off our square, that try to make us um, get out of character, God, but, uh, but all things that we keep you in the front line, oh God, that we trust you to work anything out that is not like you, Father God. So I pray right now for peace and protection on everybody on this on this call on tonight, Father. I'm asking you right now for peace and restoration that everybody will be able to sleep and rest so good tonight and wake up refreshed. In the morning, Father. So I give your name all honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And Father, we just also thank you for Sister Marcy. Um, she says she's got um, two exams next week. So, Father, we ask you to give her uh, the wisdom, the understanding, so she's able to um, pass those exams. And for uh, those that are in school right now, uh, Father, we have several that are still in school, um, Leslie and um, Prophet Mikhail and Dr. Margaret. So we pray even for them as well, God, that you give them your um, uh, guidance and wisdom so that even as they're going through their courses that you, they are able to finish and finish well. We thank you for them being able to do it with, uh, uh, with great uh, ability um, without it overwhelming them or stressing them. So Father, we thank you for uh, being with them as they take any exams or any papers that need to um, be done. And so I ask that you would touch Sister Marcy, Lord God, for, uh, as she's asking for understanding and even help her, Lord, as she is uh, taking care of, of not only school, but in also with taking care of her small children. So we just ask that you would give her the grace to accomplish it all. So God, we just thank you now for even those that have that are not able to get on today, we ask that you bless yeah, those that are in different God. places that have different things that are, they're doing. And so, God, we just ask that you would just continue to lead us and guide us. And we just give you the praise for it all. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, everybody, have a great rest of the evening. And Lord willing, we see you on Sunday. Amen. Have a blessed one, everybody. Amen. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Amen.